Hey family, the tax deadline for individuals is right around the corner and with 14 days left to go, you may need to consider filing a tax extension. Now what this extension does, it gives you an additional six months to get your return filed. However, if you have a balance, it does not give you an extension of time to pay. So please keep that in mind. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to fill out Form 4868, which is the application for automatic extension of time to file a U.S. individual income tax return. In case you're new here, my name is Timalyn Bowens and I am America's favorite EA. As an enrolled agent, I'm licensed through the Internal Revenue Service to represent taxpayers in all 50 states in regards to tax matters, okay? One of the things that I see people face is the failure to file penalty. If you have a balance for the first five months that you're late filing, the IRS hits you with a 5% penalty and it's 5% of whatever that balance is. This could all be avoided by simply filing form 4868 by the time the tax return is due. So if you're watching this video right now and you need to file an extension, this extension for tax year 2023 needs to be filed by April 15th at midnight. I would advise filing it before that because it's better safe than sorry, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So let's take a look at this. In this example today, we have a couple that is married filing jointly. So we have their names here as they appear on the tax return. So we have Donald J. Trump and Melania Trump. Now, if you were also in a similar situation filing with your spouse, you wanna make sure that in addition to putting the names the way they show up on the return, you put them in the same order that they show up on the return. So. From this example, we can see that Donald J. Trump is taxpayer and Melania's spouse. We have the address, 725 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, zip code 10022. Now, you have to keep in mind that whenever you give the IRS your address about something, that is where they are going to send correspondence. So let's say that you moved at the beginning of 2024, but you're filling this out for 2023, put your current address because if there's any correspondence they need to send to you, they're gonna send it to the address that you have listed here, okay? Now, number two, you're gonna put the social security number of yourself, the taxpayer, or if you're the spouse, it's gonna go right here, okay? So make sure that this social security matches the first person's name, this social security number matches the second person's name. Or if you're single or filing as head of household, you only have to worry about yourself, okay? Now, part two is what I see a lot of people do incorrectly. In order for this to be a, an extension request that gets accepted, you are supposed to estimate your total liability for 2023. And a lot of people ask me, well, like, how in the world am I supposed to do that? Well, what the liability is, which by the way, if you make more than the standard deduction, you definitely have a tax liability, but that doesn't always mean that you owe, right? So if your income is pretty similar to what it was the year before, you could look at your 2022 tax return and look at line 16. This is going to be at the top of page two of your 1040. And it's going to say tax. This is your tax liability. Okay, so if everything is pretty much the same, you can use that tax number right here. So keep in mind as well, this is an estimate of your total tax liability for 2023. It doesn't have to be exact, but it should be as close as possible. Next for line five, we're looking at your total 2023 payments. So that means if you are a wage earner, you can look in box two of your W-2 or W-2s and the amount that was withheld for federal is what's going to go right here. 
Now, if you were self-employed, in addition to being a wage earner, if you made any type of estimated tax payments, or even if you're a wage earner, but maybe you have investment income, rental income, dividends, which that could all be considered investment, and you made estimated tax payments, those also are going to go there. All right. Then you're going to figure out what your balance would be. So in this example, we have the estimate of 800000 Total 2023 payments, 800750 So the balance due would be either zero or we could put negative 750 because we're anticipating him getting a $750 refund, which if you watched the political debates a few years ago, you know why that number is relevant. With the extension, the way to make sure, and I'm sorry about that, the way to make sure that this gets accepted is that you make a payment of at least a dollar or more, right? But in this situation, we're not anticipating him to owe. So let's just, for the sake of this, say that the estimated balance was going to be $1. So with this dollar here, we would make sure we have that he's going to pay that. And remember, it has to be paid by the deadline, the 15th, because that's the deadline to pay. He's not out of the country, so we're not going to check this box. And he is not filing a 1040 NR, which is 1040 non-resident. So we're not going to check this box either. So to get this to the IRS, there are three ways that we could do it. One, if you go online to irs.gov and then go to payments and select to make a payment for 2023 before the date and you choose for that to go towards an extension, that will automatically extend your time to file your tax return by six months, making your deadline October 15th, okay? The second way is if you fill this out, or no, I'm sorry, I'll go with it because I was gonna save that for third. The second way is if you fill this out the same way I have, but of course you don't want to use Donald J. Trump and Melania Trump. You want to have your own information filled in here and your estimate along with your payments. You can also mail this in, okay? So what you would do, you could Google the 2023 form 4868. This form will come up. You will cut this here, right? So you're only sending in this part. And then the question I often get asked is, where do I mail mine? So if you are in Arkansas or Oklahoma, you are going to send it right here to Louisville where I'm at, at P.O. Box 931-300, Louisville, Kentucky, 402-93-1300. Or if you're in Connecticut, Delaware, District of Columbia, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kentucky, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Missouri, North Hampshire, New Hampshire, sorry, New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, Vermont, Virginia, or West Virginia, Wisconsin, you'll send it to the same address as well. And this is if you're making a payment with it, okay? So the Trump family, because they're in New York, they are going to be sending theirs here to Louisville. Now, if they're not sending a payment, they would send it to this Kansas City, Missouri address. All right. So when you need to see who or where to send this to, you want to make sure you look up the state that you live in and then find the corresponding address. Now, we'll add if you're going to mail this, I highly recommend that you do it certified mail and get that green receipt with the tracking number just so you have proof that the IRS did actually receive it. Okay. And then the last option that you have is through a tax software. You can e-file this or you can hire a tax professional to do it for you. Now, that is not something that I do because my busy season is actually over and we are not bringing on new tax preparation clients. But you can use the IRS website to find a preparer near you if you don't already have one. But remember to do your due diligence. I'll leave in the comments below a podcast episode that I did talking about what to look for in a tax professional. If you have any questions or concerns, make sure that you leave them down in the comments for me. All right. And best wishes 
with getting this extension filed on time. 